Okay, this is going to be a walkthrough video of uh, the third example in which we're going to look at the Fermi surface and band structure of lead. Um, I'm not going to actually run many of the, uh, the, the QE uh, calculations uh, live, they just take a little bit of time, um, but let's quickly talk through things. So, um, okay, I've got some extra files here, but um, first of all, I need to do the ground state uh, calculation. So this is my input file. Um, it's a PAW type, uh, pseudopotential, PPE, um, quite a few K points. It's a metal, I've got some smearing in here, um, all fairly fairly standard bits and pieces. So I could go ahead and run the uh, the, uh, the SCF calculation and I'd get a file, scf.out, here it is. Um, it's going through and the thing to make note of is, is the uh, electronic states and it's told us what the Fermi energy is and we're going to need that so we will make a note of, of, of that number. Okay, so um, we're going to work with a uh, four, no an eight cubed grid, so 512k points. So then we run a non-self-consistent calculation, so here it is nscf.in, same pseudo-potential, now the the, the 512k points, which we've used the k-mesh tool to, to generate. In this particular case, we're going to calculate 13 bands. Okay. Um, so, what would that give you as a band structure? We've not actually got the input files for a band structure, but you could certainly make them and plot them, and you would end up with something like this. So, ignore the colors for the moment, but here's the band structure of lead. We've got, in the pseudopotential, we have the D states included. So there are the five D states here. They're fairly flat and dispersionless, so they're not making a major contribution to bonding, but for a more accurate pseudopotential, we, we typically include them for lead. Um, the Fermi energy is about here. So there are um, actually two different bands that cut the, cut the Fermi energy, okay? Um, interestingly, these states form an isolated manifold. So even though this is a metal, um, this is an isolated set of states, but we're not going to focus on that at the moment. It's hard to know that sort of a priori. Um, these are the 13 states. So what we're going to look for uh, in this case is, is states that describe well the occupied and uh, the states around the Fermi energy. So we're going to set our frozen window to be about here where this uh, pale blue dashed line is. The Fermi energy is the, is the darker line. And we're going to look for Vanier functions that describe uh, these D states. Well, that sounds like a projection onto 5D orbitals. That's fairly straightforward. Um, and because they're different in energy, we've got some states here and they will typically have uh, S and P character. Uh, so we'll project onto maybe SP3, SP3 states. Okay. So that's what the band structure of lead looks like. How does that correspond to the, to the win file? Um, so example three dot win, here we go, um, 13 bands. Uh, the projections down here, so as I said, that's D and SP3, so that's 5D and 4 SP3, so nine Vanier functions in total, that's here. And we've set some windows, which uh, again correspond to the values of that uh, diagram that I've just shown. Um, a fairly sensible K point path, and for the moment I am going to plot the band structure, but not much else. Okay, so I would typically then do the, do the, uh, the, um, pre-processing step and write the NNKP file, I'd run uh, a PW to Vanier 90. So you can see now I've got the, um, the M matrix, the IG matrix, and the A matrix all set up there. So what I can do is go ahead and run Vanier 90 uh, on EX3. And that will just take a few moments. Okay, that's finished. It took a few moments because the uh, we had an 8 by 512 K points, so more K points than we've used previously. Let's just have a quick look at this. Um, okay, standard header, unit cell, parameters, K points, shells, disentanglement window, disentanglement procedure. Very quick. It's not having to do very much work. That's not too surprising given the fact that the bands aren't particularly entangled. Um, now, now we're into minim minimization. So you see that initially I've got, uh, these are the D orbitals. There's five of them. 
So these these will be the D projections onto the D orbitals. They're all centered on the origin. They're quite um, more quite well localized, and the SP3, uh, which will be also centered on uh, around the lead atom in a sort of tetrahedral configuration. They have slightly larger spreads, and uh, yeah, we go through. We minimize. How's the spread looking now? So yeah, so the spread is 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 going down ten to the minus six. Uh, we put, we, we've printed out every iteration here, so this file is quite big. Oh, there we go. That's the end. Sorry, not scrolling past. So, okay, we could have taken the spread a bit a bit tighter, but um, uh, so here we have the deal tools. Interestingly, they have clearly done something. Um, they've, it looks like they're split into two groups. Okay. There's two with uh, the spread at 5.5, and there's three with the spread at 8.8. .8. That's probably some sim particular symmetry decomposition. I think if you went and looked at the Vanier functions themselves, you'd be able to see that. Uh, it's hard to see it just from the spread them itself. And we've got the uh, the four uh, sp3 orbitals. Okay. Um, right. So we should have a band structure. So um, if we do a new plot and we load up. Uh, ex3 band.gnu. Right, so it takes a few moments, but there we have that's our band structure of, of lead. Okay. Um, we've got the five D states down here. This uh, S like band is split off. These these states uh, are entangled, threefold degeneracy at the gamma points. The Fermi energy, as we said, is somewhere somewhere along here. Okay, remember it, we said it was um, about 11.2 EV, so, so it's cut in sort of through about here. Okay, uh, we could compare that to the uh, to the Curie results. Actually, with an eight cube grid, the the agreement is actually quite quite good. Um, but what we'd like to be able to do is uh, plot the uh, make a plot of the Fermi surface. So it's a quick GNU plot. And if we edit the win file, so ex3.win. So uh, if I go down here, so I'm, I'm going to restart the calculation. I'm going to tell it to do a Fermi surface plot. I'm going to tell it what the Fermi energy is. Now, you don't have to do that, but then that will get written in the output file and automatically read by the, by the plotting programs. OK, so let's do that. OK, so we'll run Vanier 90 again. So this is interpolating the eigenvalues onto a 50 by 50 by 50 mesh. So this step does take a little bit of time. Uh, obviously, these things could be run in parallel and then they would be um, since it's almost trivially parallel. So it would be um, quite efficient. But there we go. We've run this. And what we've generated is a BXSF file. OK. Um, it says it's for, for X Chris Dan. Uh, you see it's got the Fermi energy encoded in it, but about the unit cell, and then there's a bunch of eigenvalues. Now, rather than use X Chris Dan, um, I'm actually going to use Fermi Surfer, which uh, is a really nice program. Now, I've moved that BXSS file onto a local machine just to make it a bit easier to visualize, but you can, if you're running through the, through the GUI, uh, the, the web interface, uh, this you could do it that way. Um, right. Sorry, I've just got to find which tab I have. Here we go. So if I type Fermi Surface Viewer x3.bxsf, again, you might need to launch this via a command window. There we go. That's what we get. So this is the first Bro one zone. And here is the Fermi Surface. Now, it's colored it according to the, to the Fermi velocity, which it's uh, calculated itself. So instead, I'm just going to color it by band index. I'll click Update. There we go. That's a little bit easier to see. So um, I've got... So band six, yeah, band six, it corresponds to the to this piece of the Fermi surface that's entirely contained within the first Bro one zone. Um, band seven is quite interesting, so it just sort of runs around the edges. Now, if you change this into the primitive <coughs> Bro one zone, so we're looking now at the the primitive unit cell. That same band looks rather uh, more connected. Okay, so this one, this one, these very interesting Fermi surface shapes. This is sort of related to things that uh, Leo Falikov did, sometimes referred to as Falikov's monster. Okay, so there we go, and I'm and I'm, and I'm back here. Okay, so that was uh, a fairly quick run through of uh, how to get hold of uh, uh, pictures of a Fermi surface uh, using Vanier functions and Vanier interpolation.
Um, now, if we just go back, so let's look at an extension to this. If we just went back, um, we look at lead. Um, so first of all, if we just want the Fermi surface, why did we bother getting the D states? We don't need them, okay? Um, equally, why did we do a disentanglement? Well, what we could have, if we look at this band structure, we see that actually, um, if we, if if in the end, uh, the original calculation, we don't uh, PW calculation, we'd only calculated nine bands, we wouldn't have any of these black bands up here. And in fact, we could form a set of Vanier functions for, uh, for a set of four Vanier functions just describing this manifold of states here. So we could exclude these occupied D states. Uh, from the from the Vanier calculation, um, and we could just look at forming Vanier functions for these four states here, and that would be more efficient. And it would give, uh, if we want a picture of the Fermi surface, it would give us an entirely equivalent picture of the Fermi surface, so just a bit less cost. So um, again, I won't run through um, running the calculations for this because they take a little bit of time, but just let me show you. So what I've done is I've copied the whole directory um, into what have I called it? Yeah, ex3.min, here it is. I've made some changes. So the, I didn't need to rerun re the SCF calculation because that was uh, the charge density is exactly as it was before. But in the 04.nscf, I have set n band to nine. So we're only ever going to know about those nine bands. So then I would run the, the NSCF calculation. Um, if we look in ex3.win, okay, what have I done? I've set exclude bands one to five. So in other words, I'm saying we're not going to have the D states. We're going to remove those from the vanierization. I'm going to have four vanier functions and there's going to be nine minus five states left. So num bands is just four. So this won't do any disentanglement. So if you like, you can get rid of these uh, frozen windows. They, they weren't doing anything at all because the number of bands equals the numbers of vanier functions. OK, um, here we go. I, I won't. To, um, plot the Fermi surface this time. Uh, so what I would what I would do then is I would um, so I, I do my NSCF calculation. I'd generate a new NNKP file by running Vanier 90 with the minus PP option. I would then run PW to Vanier 90, okay, and that will generate me the new uh, M matrix, A, A matrix, and the eigenvalues, and then I could run Vanier 90, okay. And when I run Vanier 90 now, here we go. Um, this is what we get in the output. Same stuff as before, but now no disentanglement because uh, there's nothing to, to disentangle. Number of states equals number of Vanier functions. I know all I've got is four Vanier functions here, all with the same spread. And actually these minimize really quite quickly. So by about 40 steps, the spread is almost down to machine precision. Scroll through to the end. Much changing down here. Where's the end of the file? There's the end of the file. Okay, so there's my uh, four quite symmetric Vanier functions. And um, let's have a look if I load new plot and load up this file. Okay, there it is. So now I've just generated a Vanier Hamiltonian that only knows about those SP states around the Fermi energy. And you could convince yourself that if you, if you plotted the um, the Fermi surface from this, it would be identical to what we got before, but the cost is, is, is significantly reduced. Now, final extension. Um, of course, when we think about lead, we think about spin orbit coupling. Okay, so we're thinking these are these are this is quite a heavy relativistic elements. So, um, how would we do a calculation with spin orbit coupling on lead? So I have copied the files across into another directory. Um, here. So I'm going to need to run a new, so I'm going to do a calculation with spin orbit coupling. So I'm going to need to do a new SCF calculation and it will take a little bit longer than the previous one. So what have I done? What have I changed here? Um, in the system, I've said spin orbit is true and to use nonlinear uh, magnetism. So I'm going to have spin away functions now. Um, I've had to tell it to use a relativistic pseudopotential. This is actually an ultrasoft pseudopotential, but it has um, the uh, the J splitting in there. Okay, so this is a, a spin orbit calculation. Um, and so I can run uh, my uh, SCF calculation and, uh, in the same way as before. Now, when I come to run my NSCF calculation, 
I've got to do a little bit of careful thinking. So the band structure to a good approximation will look like this, but there will be some uh, spin orbit splittings in it. Um, but this manifold will still be isolated. But now, um, instead of having five states, five D states, I have to uh, consider the full uh, spin degeneracy. So actually there will be 10 states down here. And uh, instead of having four states in this manifold here, it will actually be eight. So each, because there's no magnetism, each of these states should be twofold degenerate. Okay. So I'm going to need to do 18, twice as many uh, bands as before in order to capture these red bands. Okay. So in my uh, 04.nscf, I've had to do a couple of things. I had to pop in those lines that were new. I had to put in the relativistic pseudopotential that's here. And I set n bands equal to 18. Um, what did I need to do to, to change Vanier 90? Um, so if I look at ex3 dot uh, win, what have I changed? I've told it to exclude bands 1 to 10, remembering that's going to be the d states, the 10 d states. Num bands is now 8, not 4. And number of Vanier functions is 8 and not 4. And I've told it to uh, that we're using spinners. Okay, so it knows that. And the projections are still the same, sp3. There are actually eight projections because what Vanier 90 will do is it will do sp3, four sp3s on a spin up spinner and four sp3s on a spin down spinner. Now, if you're in an antiferromagnetism, magnetic system and you want to do something clever, uh, there's a lot of different control you can have for spinner projections. It's all described in the user manual, but that's quite a, quite a, a, a straightforward thing. OK, so then I can I go through my normal cycle of running uh, SCF, non-SCF, Vanier 90 with a minus PP, PWT Vanier 90, and finally Vanier 90 itself. And what happens uh, in the output? Here we go. Um, all looking kind of similar. Uh, the caper mesh is, 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 is identical. So now here's my eight Vanier functions, all with a similar spread. OK, and this will go through exactly the same procedure. I've just now got eight Vanier functions dot not four. OK, um, what will I get as my output? Well, let's have a look at my uh, my band structure. OK, here is my spin orbit coupled band structure. So there are some obvious differences. Now, let me see if I can just try to over switch between the two. So let's let's give you an idea. We're again just focusing on these four states here. This lower state is essentially unchanged. That's that's still split off from everything else. But now I've broken the degeneracy at gamma. Okay, you can see that here this is a very large several EV spin orbit splitting. This is split off. And in fact this band itself has become completely uh, isolated from the other bands. Um, a few other things if you look at the states around here I've obviously broken broken some of the uh, of the degeneracies there as well. Okay, so spin orbit split, uh, coupling has made quite a big difference to the Fermi uh, to the sorry the band structure of lead, which is what you might expect. Um, this splitting here has gone away. Now something very interesting is we have slightly split the spin degeneracy of those things here. That's a numerical artifact, and we could uh, perhaps do a slightly more accurate calculation up the K grid a little bit um, in order to sort of restore that restore that property there. It'd be quite easy now, I'm not going to do it, but it'd be quite easy to look at the Fermi surface of lead. And something that's quite interesting is, from at least from my memory, is that um, while the band structure of lead is really quite different, the Fermi surface of lead, with and without spin normal coupling, is hardly changed. So there's no discernible differences between it, which is kind of interesting. OK, so that was an example of uh, how we can actually rather straightforwardly uh, generate um, Vanier functions, Vanier Hamiltonians for systems uh, with spin orbit coupling included.